Today, we'll be reviewing this new Ulanzi Smart Pixel Clock. It's a beautiful 49 USD LED digital clock that projects not only the time, but information such as follower counts, weather, as well as other interesting information. For all those who are new out there, my name is James, and for the longest time, I've been searching for a subscriber counter. The closest I find was actually this Lemetric Time, which hovers about 169 USD, which was a little expensive for me. So when I saw that Ulanzi came out with this smart pixel clock that only cost about 49 USD, it really caught my attention. So without further ado, let's unbox this and see what it comes in the retail package and some of its features. And here you have this uh, sticker to show that it's actually certified. The instruction manual, charging cables, and of course the clock itself. Now let's power this thing up. What you want to do is hold this uh, left and right button over here at the same time and there you go so starting off let's talk about some of its features so here you have is the timer screen and here you have the date okay let's bring it a bit closer and then the weather it shows like the temperature the humidity and my favorite which is the youtube uh, subscriber count and you can see that there's this uh, small little animation over here and this is like a counter so like let's say if you have a team A and team B, you can press here and then you can start counting the points. I mean this is useful for all those who are like playing basketball or some form of sports outdoors and you want to use this as a display. I think it's a brilliant idea. Okay, here you have the battery. So it shows uh, how the capacity of it. And here's a very interesting uh, matrix screen. Alright, so I'll show you guys how I change some of the settings through my mobile phone while we go through this. I'm sure some of you guys are having anxiety when I put this up there. So how do you get to this screen is that you have to key in the IP address which is at the top. Now I blur some of it out obviously, I do not want you guys to come stalking me. And you can see that there are a few settings out there that you can change. Uh, the first one will be language. Currently there's only uh, English or Chinese. And here you have the uh, brightness. Now you can set it on auto which is uh, it will just change according to the environment setting. But I've set it to manual. And then we have switch speed, uh, meaning how long each screen would stay. And these are all the other information. This is the second screen and we can change some of the details of the different applications such as the weather. You will need to input the city code. And here are some of the other Chinese applications and of course the YouTube subscriber counter. Once we open it up, you can see that you need to input some of the key details to be able to track the exact number of subscriber counts. Now, as you probably have guessed why I'm so familiar with this, is actually I've used this clock for at least about three days now. So I'm a little familiar with some of its functions, which I'll break down in pros and cons at the end. Now, for the geeks and nerds out there, I'm sure you guys want to know what is the measurements and some of the details on this little clock. So let's take a look at some of its specifications. Now, let's start with its length. Its length measures about 200 cm or about 78.7 inches. As for its width, it measures about 70 cm or 27.5 inches. Now the thickness at the sides measures about 31.8 cm or about 12.5 inches. Now let's talk about its materials and its weight. Now when I hit against it, you can hear that it's actually made out of this high quality plastic, not the hollow -y kind. So for its weight, it's rather light, coming at about 283 grams or about 9.98 ounce. Now let's talk about power. <laughs> Here we go. How long can one of these smart pixel clock last? Now each one of these clock has an input battery of about 4,400 mAh, which lasts about 5 hours of standby time. It takes about 3 hours to charge, but in my experience, it actually takes lesser than that, about 2 hours. You will definitely get a full battery on this. Each one of these charge powers the 256 lamps that is actually in the LCD screen. LED screen. Now let's take a closer look at some of the ports and buttons found on the clock. At the top, you can see that there's these three buttons over here. Now this is the left button, the center button, and the right button. All of these are accessible with all the different screens and function slightly differently. Now what is on this at the side, this is basically a light uh, sensor to be able to detect whether it's actually in a dark or in a bright environment. More importantly for the auto setting if you're planning to set it on automatic for its brightness. Now when I turn it upside down, you can see that the base is actually quite plain. It just has these two rubber paddings to be able to elevate it slightly above the base. Now at the sides, I like it because it's actually quite uh, plain. There's nothing at the sides. But at the back, you can see, let's start with this one. Now this one is a little small reset button. You just need a small pin, such as the one that you use for your SIM cards or your mobile phones, to be able to reset this clock to its factory settings. 
just in case you got some of the Wi-Fi or settings wrong, this is a good hard reset. Moving on to the center is obviously the port for charging, the USB-C port. On the left is actually a light indicator. Uh, if you're charging, it will show you whether it's green or red depending on the amount of charge that's actually on the Pixel clock itself. Now moving on to the center left, you can see that there's these two holes over here which the menu says are buzzer outlets. It actually gives off sound and vibrations depending on some of the modes that you are changing or accessing. So let's go through some of the screens which I actually set. Let's start with the clock. Alright, so this is the clock, the timer. You can set the format. If you can see the bars at the bottom is actually the days of the week. So now I'm actually filming on a Thursday and it's on the fourth bar. Next is actually the date the weather and the subscriber count and this is a scorekeeping timer the battery capacity and this very interesting magic screen which actually is one of my favorites now let's talk about its pros and cons i'm sure some of you guys want to know what are the benefits of having this and what are the shortcomings of it but before that if you have been enjoying this video do give me a thumbs up and leave me down in the comments below which features you have been liking the most is it the matrix screen or is it the subscriber count i would like to know now let's start with its cons now i have two main cons over here Number one, follower counts. Now if you observe, you do see a YouTube follower count. But for Instagram, Facebook, or even TikTok, there isn't one, not at least yet. The other counters besides for YouTube are actually for mainly Chinese platforms. Namely, Bibili, Weibo, and Douyin. And if I actually need picking, once we change over to the YouTube subscriber count, I actually have 1,842 subscribers. So the last digit is actually a bit inaccurate. As I said, I'm just nitpicking. I'm sure they are actually actively working on this. Number two is the weather app. Now, the weather that you've seen here is actually not the one that is actually in Singapore where I reside in. I've actually switched to Hong Kong one because somehow once I set it to the Singapore um, timer, it actually doesn't work. For other countries and places in China, it actually works more accurately. So I think this is something that is actually work no progress. With the cons out of the way, which aren't actually very big ones, let's talk about its pros. Number one is obviously its price. Now I've searched online for other forms of YouTube counters. Most of them are actually just mechanical, not an all-in-one digital one such as the Lumetric or this one. So in terms of its price, this one is actually a clearly a better price point which just one third of what the Lumetric time costs. Number two is its interface. Now its interface is rather simple as it doesn't require to have an app. All you have to do is just access a URL to be able to change the settings on this. Be it on your mobile phone or on your computer or laptop device, you're able to change it anywhere. Number three is the materials used. Now, materials used for this aren't exactly very heavy. It's actually really light and keeps it really classy. Now, what is most impressive is actually the materials of the buttons on the top. It's made out of this very nice rubbery material, so once you press it, it gives you a very nice and tactile experience. Last but not least is actually the animation screens. Now, each of these little screens have some slight animation on it. You can see that it changes very seamlessly without any lag. With the pros and cons laid out, let's conclude. I really love this Ulanzi Pixel Clock, despite its flaws which mostly can be resolved with software updates. The price that you're getting for this counter is really amazing as you're able to access different functions and be able to adjust them in particular detail. The material and functioning of the clock is amazing for the price that you're paying. Above checking the date, time and weather, I can't emphasize how much I really like this matrix animation screen. It's very therapeutic just looking at it. This clock is almost perfect. All they have to do is actually just offer more variety of apps. If they can include Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok counters, I'm sure this will be sold out in seconds. So what do you like most about this Ulazi clock? Leave me down in the comments below. And just one more favor, help me to increase this subscriber number count. If not, I'll see you guys in the next video.